Hi, I'm Christine. I work at Iron USA, and, and I'm here to talk about digital storytelling and empathy. So I have the incredible job of working with young people around the world from countries with significant Muslim populations. Uh, and about a year ago, we organized a series of digital storytelling workshops to provide them training in the skills of storytelling and social media, because we strongly believed that these were vital 21st century skills. But inevitably, I ended up learning something completely unexpected. We brought 25 young people from these 11 countries and territories together across, from across the Middle East for one week in Doha. Uh, having them all in one room in, a, in and of itself was a feat, overcoming decades of political and cultural division. But what I did not anticipate was the principles of a high school lunchroom. We had Israelis on one side, we had Palestinians on the other, we had all the Gulf states at one table, and then the Yemeni kid back here hiding behind the pillar. I was terrified. What is going to happen? But on the last day of the workshop, I walk into the dining hall, and I see them dragging this giant ban banquet table across the room, just so that all of them, all 25 of them, could sit together at one table and share a meal together. So what had changed? What, what made them move away from this self-division and value unity? So several months later, I came home and heard this story on the news about a young girl who had committed suicide after being cyberbullied. And naturally, the, the country was blaming social media, and I was perplexed. But my brain switched, switched to the stories about my digital storytellers. And I wondered, how can we encourage young people to use technology and digital media in a positive way to elevate their peers and to start to build healthier learning communities? So not being a scientist, I started with what I knew had worked, and that was stories. And come to find out, our brains are literally wired for storytelling. And if we look back about 28,000 years or so, no big deal, we'll see the first evidence of storytelling. In fact, throughout history, stories have, is something that we have used to create, to define, and to preserve our culture. And there's a reason for that. It's because that's what our brains have taught us to do. So come to find out, science says that when you hear a descriptive story, it activates the right side of your brain. And which ignites your ability for imagination, literally allowing you to step out of yourself and into the experience of another. This is awesome. And this is all because of some nifty thing discovered in the rock in 90s by some scientists in Italy called neuron mirrors, or neuro, mirror neurons, there we go. <laughs> mirror neurons. And essentially, when you, when you engage in an activity, the corresponding parts of your brain light up. And what they found was that simply by watching another person enact that activity, or by hearing a descriptive story about that activity, your brain actually lit up in the same way as well. Now, another body of research says that these overlapping networks are what influence our capacity for social interaction. So if we break this down, essentially what they're saying is you hear, a, hear or watch a story, it ignites this part of your brain, these overlapping networks full of mirror neurons, and that allow for things such as imagination, um, understanding the other, and social interaction. Well, I thought to myself, gee, this sounds a lot like empathy. And that's because empathy is the ability to imagine ourselves in another's place, understand the other's feelings, desires, actions, etc. But my question was about digital media. So I started looking at today's transmedia landscape in a place where young people, in fact, anybody, including young people, can create. And we know that creating then allows, increases your sense of energy, agency uh, and allows people to participate. We know that participation creates community, and community gives a sense of, of belonging. These are all characteristics that we want for an ideal learning environment. Throw some stories in there, and what do you get? You get an entire community of empathetic brains. So what happens then if the culture of your classroom and school is based on empathy rather than on, div on division and judgment? So I looked back at our workshops to figure out what we accidentally did right. Uh, and what we had done is we broke them into teams, tasked them with the job of telling the story of another teammate, which required them to listen to each other. And in that listening, find value in the other person. Well, we go back to science, and it comes to find out that it was actually an exercise in some things that uh, researchers call unconditional positive regard, altruism, and the theory of value. So these are things, obviously, that we were, that we were promoting without even realizing it. And today, the new hottest 21st century skill is the capacity for empathy because of the strong correlation to positive social change. And not only is this a, pot, is this a hot up and coming uh, skill that people are looking for, but it's also an answer to one of the questions of this conference. How can empathetic youth voices using technology and media be part of a systemic change in school culture, in our society, and the way that we educate? And my answer, can you guess? digital storytelling.
Thank you.